All right, this is a very interesting case of a uh, vaginal lesion. And I know in class I told you essentially there's really only two that you need to worry about in addition to the occasional squamous cell carcinoma, and that would be clear cell carcinoma and embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma. Uh, this one, interestingly enough, is the clear cell carcinoma. So we'll start off to the edge, and this is uh, vaginal squamous epithelium. And you can see it. Uh, right here. So you have underlying stroma and then a thin layer of squamous epithelium uh, and there's nothing really abnormal about it. As we move closer to the lesion you'll notice that there are some glands uh, with a faint stroma around them and as I had mentioned um, endometrial stroma and glands uh, you know this could be known as endometriosis or adenosis which is glands within the vaginal mucosa and so this is one of the things that we saw in association with DES exposure in utero. Uh, in this lady unfortunately this is one of the cases where a clear cell carcinoma has developed and so if we go to low power you can see that the um, that there's this large mass with all of these cells and they invade pretty deep into the stroma so you can see some large uh, blood vessels down here and this is deep within the stroma and the tumor pressing its way down and if we go and we take a closer look at the tumor itself, you'll see that it is composed of cells uh, that are pretty pleomorphic. So you'll see that there's a lot of variation in size and shape, but you'll also notice that there's a pretty good amount of this, what we would call clear cytoplasm, which is how these tumors got their names, uh, that being the clear cell carcinoma. And so going down to even higher power, you can see that their cytoplasm is often very bubbly, uh, and it does have clearing and so this is why they're called a clear cell carcinoma. So this is an example of a clear cell carcinoma arising in association with adenosis um, that could have been tied to DES exposure.